Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers, dear Muslim brothers and sisters all around the globe. I hope you are doing fine wherever you are. Well, here in another episode of The Birth of Love, you are watching me, Jawad Ferdowsi, and with my dear honorable guest that later in the program I'm going to introduce him to you. And in each episode, we try to depict uh, an aspect of the holy life of Imam al Hussein. We know that it is a very huge obligation upon our shoulders, especially as Muslims, especially as Shias, the followers of the Ahlul Bayt, to act in the way they like, to always seek the like of God, to always seek uh, something that we can be sure that the Prophet, that Imam Hussein, would be happy with. And throughout these episodes and programs, we're going to discuss about the things that we can do, about the things that we should not do, we should not even think about them, about the lessons that can be derived from the, all the sacrifices of Imam al Hussein. So, thank you for accepting our invitation. We are here with our dear honorable guest, Sheikh Dawoodi. Welcome to your program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. Assalamu alaikum ya Abu Abdullah wa ala rawah al-lati halat bi fina'ik alayka minni salamullahi abada ma baqit wa baqi al-layl wa al-nahar wa la ja'alahu Allahu akhir al-ahd minni li ziyaratikum. Assalamu ala al-Hussein wa ala Ali ibn al-Hussein wa ala awlad al-Hussein wa ala ashab al-Hussein. Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us another opportunity to be together, talk about, uh, you know, the, the birth of love, about the life of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And also, we, we need to take different lessons from his own life. Inshallah, I am at your service to right. go forward together uh, for the program. In the last uh, session, we uh, talked about uh, the naming of Imam al Hussein and uh, how the enemies they try to kill the Prophet of Islam. And Ali ibn Abi Talib, Amir al Mu'mineen, the commander of the faithful, accepted to go and was willing to rest on the place of the Prophet so that the Prophet of Islam could be saved uh, from any assassination. And also in between, uh, we noticed that even these days and in these times, there are people who are denying uh, the responsibility, the duty, the messenger, uh, the messenger of Allah, the Prophet, and also about uh, the things that we lack. We see that as Muslims, mm -hmm. as followers, mm -hmm. in this day and age, we need more knowledge. We yes. need more act, especially those who are living in the Western countries, you know, the other people, the other people from different uh, school of thoughts, from yes. different religions, when they reach us, when they ask us about uh, our religion, about our Prophet, about especially Imam al Hussein, about the events of Ashura, well, obviously, it is an obligation upon us yes. to inform them and to invite them to the religion of Islam to give them more information about, about Imam al Hussein. So what can uh, we, teach, uh, we teach them? What can we say when they ask us a question? Especially in our behavior, in our community, what can we do so that they can show us and they can say, these are the followers of Islam. These are the true followers of the Ahlul Bayt. These are the Shias yes, that we yes. call them Shia. Yeah. See how nice they are. See how they are tolerant. See how they have patience, patience. towards other people. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you see that uh, in previous session we started talking about the, the, the birth of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And also, we, we see that everything that you mentioned here, just by studying through the life of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam as one of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, because we believe that all of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam are the same light, kulluhum nurun wahid. So it is no difference. But of course, 
we see that everyone has its own his own place and because of that because of this occasion also we are talking about Imam al Hussein alayhi salam himself and we say that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was the son of Lady Fatima to Zahra salamullah alayha the Fatima to Zahra salamullah alayha that she was not only uh, uh, you know a lady as like as the others she was not uh, a normal human a normal being, normal human call. being. She was completely different. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam every day used to go to the house of Lady Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alaihi say hello to him to her, and after that Rasulullah started to you know continue his own programs, daily programs, and also in different ahadis, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that Fatima to bid'atu minni. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to show that Lady Fatima to Zahra is so specific. And what they did to her. Yeah, him. yeah, unfortunately. You see that you mentioned he is going to give us different codes, show us different signs. Unfortunately, we completely are blind. Yes. We didn't see them or we didn't want to see them. On one occasion, Imam al Hussein states that, states the reason, because it was a question for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that. Uh, how is it possible for a human being to get to a point that he cannot see anymore? He cannot hear anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what is it wrong? You know, we are yes. waiting for the reappearance of our 12th Imam, Imam Mahdi, yeah. peace be upon him. So yeah. what can we do to make sure that at that specific day, when yeah, yeah. Imam Mahdi reappears, we can be the followers. Follow. Mm -hmm. One at one point, if I'm not mistaken, Imam Hussein says uh, to his companions that their stomach is full of forbidden foods. It's full of haram. Mm -hmm. And when you fill your you fill your stomach with the, the means that are not permissible, yes, day after day, year after year you become more blind yeah, yeah you cannot see anymore because you have acquired your food your wealth your money mm -hmm. your possessions exactly all with haram yes you just mentioned the reason yeah as imam al hussein alayhi salam himself mentioned why the people didn't accept the invitation because their stomach is full of haram because they were not following the islam but to clarify the situation, I would like to give an example. He's telling us the story of a man who used to just, uh, he was acting about the disposal system or something like this. All the time, he was with bad smells or, you know, you know yes. in a dirty places or so on, because it was his own job. Once he decided to go to the part of the, you know, uh, we say mall mm -hmm. or maybe a bazaar that uh, the people were selling perfumes at so when he went there everywhere was full of different good smells what a color what uh, you see that the, the different perfumes from different uh, we say flowers or so on and after a while the man fainted, fell down and fainted. The people came to him and started, somebody told him that bring him some good smell. Some to, perfumes. Yeah, yeah, so perfumes or so on. That yes, ref, conscious. You know, to become a refresh or something like this. Somebody who knew him asked them, okay, it is not a need. Just take him out of the place which is full of good smells or take him something with a bad smell. Garbage, a uh, piece of garbage. Put it in front of his own, you know, nose. nose. Then he becomes, you know, conscious. So and when we it, get used to bad smells, yeah. to garbage, garbage, yes. garbage it could uh, translate as bad works. Yes, yes. Bad movies, yeah. bad atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. And they're exactly so, acting like garbage. So Moulavi, is telling us the story and he said that our soul is as like as this one if all the time we are gathering with bad things as you mm -hmm. mentioned with bad movies with bad friends with bad you know actions 
even if we see someone who is a good person, we dislike him, we hate him. We say, oh, again, this man is coming. Because all the time we were busy with bad actions, bad actions. we cannot accept it. Somebody who saying prayer, oh, again, prayer. Why? Because his soul gets used to the bad actions. You say like it's it, as like it as comes, a person who is with garbages, it, exactly. he cannot tolerate it, it, it good comes, smells. When it comes to diet, we see that lots of people they are addicted to bad foods. Bad foods. They are addicted to junk foods, and you know they are overweight. Yes. Uh, they have different problems with their hearts, with uh, their eyes, with all the immune system uh, in their bodies. They are not yeah. working properly because that they have used to bad food their diet is on junk food junk foods. and we can see it for ourselves that it is true yes if we get used to bad things we might and there is a very high possibility for us yes to lose our sight not this physical you know not the reality when it comes to spirituality uh, there are uh, more eyes there are another eyes that you can see and tell the difference between the right and, and the wrong. The wrong. And uh, we're going to have uh, a very quick break. And okay. after that, dear viewers, we're going to be back with you very soon. So stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back, dear viewers. Well, we were talking about uh, being used to bad things, having a bad diet, how it can have a very negative effect on us. What should we do so that uh, we can make sure that we are living in a good atmosphere? Mm -hmm. We know that there are different traditions and narrations about choosing good friends when it comes to choosing a friend. Yeah. Uh, we've yeah. been told that you have to be really careful yes. because they can have a bad effect on you if you are not careful. Yes, the role models are very models. important, are very important. When we refer to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is showing us a good role model. وَلَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, also He is showing us, if you want to be a good Muslim, not only be a good Muslim, even have a good life, you know, you have to follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because He is a good example, a role model, we need it. Also, Amir Al-Mu'mineen Alayhi Salaam, Imam Al-Hussein Alayhi Salaam, Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah. So we see that in such a, you know, atmosphere, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was coming to the world. His mother was Lady Fatima al Zahra, salamullah alayhi salam, that we mentioned. She was very, very specific and gracious. Iqbal Lahuri, who is one of the great, you know, Muslims from Pakistan, he is. And he's famous also. He has, uh, you know, dif different books in different languages, in Persian, in Urdu maybe in English. He was, you know, familiar with Persian also. He is describing Lady Fatima to Zahra Salamullah And at the beginning says that Lady Fatima to Zahra, sorry, Lady Maryam, the mother of, you know, Isa, the mother of the Holy Jesus, was gracious because of her own relation to Isa. She was the mother of Isa, and because of that, she is so gracious for us. But now you refer to Lady Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha. She is gracious to us because of three different relations. And also in his own poem, in Arabic also, he says, Hiya ummuman, hiya bintuman, hiya zawjatuman. What does it mean? She is the mother of Imam al Hussein, the mother of uh, Imam al Hassan, the mother of Lady Zainab. So she is the mother of such great people. And also, she was the daughter of Rasulullah, Khayrul Bashar. The best man of the world was Rasulullah. So she was the daughter of such a man. And also, she was the, the wife of. 
Ali alayhi salam, the commander of faithful. The deviation actually occurred when they disrespected mm. Fatimat al-Zahra. Fatimat al-Zahra. So, is it possible for someone to say that somebody was living in such a family and he doesn't know Islam? Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was living among them. Exactly. His mother was Lady Fatima to Zahra. His father was Imam Ali alayhi salam. His grandfather was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we see that some people cannot accept him as a role model, as an example. Why? Because their stomach is full of you know, haram foods, because all the time they were busy with bad actions, with bad smells, as we mentioned in the story, as I told you. So, because of that, we see that Imam al Hussein alayhi salam was so specific. His own status was so specific. When he was, you know, uh, just, he came to the world, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa, alayhi wa sallam named him Shubair or in Arabic Hussein because he wanted to say that yeah this is the son of Ali who is the Wasi and my own successor as you see that Harun was the successor of Musa it, there comes a question <coughs> sorry there comes a question but uh, as I mentioned in the program that lots of people, lots of uh, followers of the Ahlul Bayt, uh, they truly, in their hearts, they want to do something for Imam Al-Hussein. Mm -hmm. Most mm -hmm. of us wish mm -hmm. that, I wish I had been there. I wish I was there to help uh -huh. Imam Al-Hussein, to protect uh -huh. him. Uh -huh. But we mm -hmm. know, uh, in a very great mission, we need preparation. We need to prepare ourselves. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to put this question to you, that what are the preparations, what are the prerequisites for someone to be among the followers, true followers of the Ahlul Bayt, Imam al Hussein? What are the prerequisites for someone to join Imam al-Mahdi when he reappears? What should we do to prepare ourselves so that we can be sure that we are seeing the true things. We can tell and we can differentiate between the bad and the good, between the wrong and the right. What are the things? Yeah. What are our tasks and obligation? Okay. We see that when you refer to a hadith of Ahlul Bayt salam, almost all of them, okay, they are mentioning something for us. I mean for this generation that now we are living at this time, the time that Imam al-Mahdi Ajjalallah Ta'ala Farajah Sharif is not among us and also it is being called Akhar zaman the end of the world. So they, they refer us, they recommend us and they order us to just wait for the reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi. What does the meaning of waiting for him? Just staying home, putting our hands and, and to some him. extent, the reason that we can't see Imam Mahdi among us is because of our yeah, sins. Yeah. What does it mean exactly? We see that sometimes, as you mentioned, the people may say that, I hope that I was at the time of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Of yeah, exactly. course, exactly. I would have helped him. Yeah, of course. Sometimes it is impossible because we are living at the time of Imam al Mahdi. What are we doing are to we make doing? him happy, yes. to please him? As a good Muslim, can we say that Imam salam is pleased with us? Because every day we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to hasten in his reappearance. So if he comes here, is it okay for us yeah, to just go in front of Imam salam and we see that he is completely pleased with us? For example, I have a cell phone. Can I show my cell phone to Imam Mahdi at Jalal Ta'ala? Exactly. Uh, or, or say that, oh, oh sorry, sorry. There on, on, one, on one occasion, we were sitting with some of my friends in a car, and uh, the car in front of us, well, he didn't, it didn't make a move mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. at the crossing. And 
one of my friends, he was outraged. He was so impatient. And uh, the other person that was in the car, he told him that you can be sure that you are not among uh, the people around Imam Mahdi. You And he was surprised. And he asked him, why is it that you are saying something big like this to me? How do you know that I'm not among? He told them that you don't have this patience mm -hmm. to let the other car go and you get for outraged a for a fraction of a second. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you can't control yourself. How is it possible for you when you don't have a little bit of patience yes. and yes. at the same time we wish that we could be among the companions of Imam Mahdi? Yeah, unfortunately we see that sometimes we believe and we claim that we are Muslims. But in our actions, it is not, you know, as we claim. Yeah, uh, exactly. We, we have to follow the uh, the way of Ahlul Bayt Ali Musallam. Their footsteps. To 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 refer to their own life and find out the the lifestyle for us. We we need it exactly. You know, I claim that I am a Muslim. So, just by saying some words, I cannot be Muslims. As Imam Sadr Ali Salam mentioned. Uh, don't make us shameful just do something that we, we get pleased with you so it is very important yes you mentioned that we are living in such a situation so we, we want to say that exactly referring to the life of Imam al Hussein salam is a good role model I, b I believe we should uh, act in a way that no one can accuse us <laughs> of uh, being just uh, the followers of Ahlul Bayt just in words. You know, there are some people that uh, they accuse us that they say, you're just saying nice words. But it is upon us, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, yes. it is upon us to show them that no, the true thing is that everything happens in our actions. Yes. And especially when we want other people to join us, when we want other people to come and participate in the Majalis of the Ahl al-Bayt, yeah. in Muharram, when, our, when we beat our chests, when we shed tears, uh, we need to show them that our actions is something that matters. Mm -hmm. and yes. This is very important. Imam Sadr salam mentioned, Kunu du'at al nas wa ghayr al sanatikum just invitation is not with a tongue invitation exactly. is with an action exactly actions are very important yeah if i want to show imam mahdi to the people they cannot see him but they can refer to imam al hussein alayhi salam they can take some lessons from him they are the same you know even in rawaya when we refer to some other ahadith we see that yeah, they You're make some simi time, sorry. Yeah, similarity between Imam Mahdi and Imam Al Hussein because of this. We want to take exactly. a role model. Exactly. That's Thank it. you. Thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, for taking your time here. If Thank you do you. have anything to say to our dear viewers, Thank you very much. Also, free. I hope to continue our discussion, inshallah, course, in the future. Of course. Thank you. Thank you, our dear respected viewers, dear Muslim brothers and sisters. I hope that you've enjoyed this session of our programs the birth of love and uh, please do not forget to pray for us and in the coming episodes and programs we're gonna discuss about uh, different aspects other aspects of the holy life of Imam al Hussein. and uh, like the previous session uh, we do hope that uh, you could make use of these lessons and uh, we could actually translate these words and sentences into our own action if we want to please our Imam, Imam al-Mahdi in this day and age. Do not forget us in your prayers and take care.